This is Christopher Maldong of Chris's Storytelling Corner. Today I'm going to do a movie review for Liz and the Bluebird. Next time I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 33 and 34, an anime review for the Hunter Exam arc of Hunter by Hunter, and a movie review for the anime movie Mariah of the Future. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. I'd really like to hear from you guys as well, so leave any comments, and make sure to subscribe and share this channel as well. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm actually just going to give a brief synopsis of the movie. Um, I'm not really going to give a recap because there isn't like... The synopsis kind of just explains what happens in the movie. And then I'll give my thoughts on the movie. Um, as far as an initial grade goes, here's the thing. I'm going to grade it, grade it on like two different curves. On an entertainment on pure entertainment, it's probably only a C at best. From an artistic perspective, this gets an A. So it really depends on what you're looking for in this movie. So, and I'll explain more in my thoughts. So let's get with the synopsis of Liz and the Blue Bird. Uh, the film plot revolves around the relationship between Mizore. Uh, I'm going to butcher it. A lot of names, by the way. Yoroi Zeke Yorizuka and Nozomi Kasaki, uh, two third-year students who have been best friends since middle school. Missouri, uh, who plays the Oboe, or Obo, uh, I can't pronounce that, is shy and soft-spoken, uh, dependent on the outgoing Nozomi, who plays the flute. The band prepares for nationals, and the pair actually prepare to graduate. Uh, Mizori grows depressed as her separation from Nozomi draws near. Meanwhile, the band is assigned to play a piece based on a German fairy tale called Liz and the Blue Bird. Another story in which two friends must bid each other farewell. So, before we get into my thoughts on the movie, I'd like to plug my author's website at www.chrismaldon.com and you can read a new blog post on there every week. Also, do you like anime? Do you like action, adventure, fantasy, crazy new characters? Uh, different worlds? Then buy my book, The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom, for just $4.99 via ebook on Amazon.com or on my author's website. Links to buy it will be provided on the paid description. Please also subscribe to this channel as that would really help me out. So, let's get on to my thoughts. So, there are... Uh, I'll probably I'll explain some of the events here, um, events of the movie itself that are important, and like I said, um, entertainment versus art artistry are two different things. Um, this is actually based on sound the anime slash light novels sound euphonium, and I wish I knew that before I wa watched a movie. Um, I don't. You don't, necessarily, you don't necessarily need to watch Sound Euphonium. And apparently these two characters aren't even introduced until like season two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you don't necessarily need to watch the anime to um, get an idea of what's happening in the story and to get to know the characters. There are some characters um, that like Kosaka, for example, that are important to Sound Euphonium that is, are just like minor characters in here. Um, so, like I said, you don't need to watch it, but I, I would have liked to. At least, I, I think I probably would have gotten more into it ha had I saw the anime or like read the light novels or something like that. Um... They mentioned that Nozomi actually quit the band as a first year, somewhere in the middle of the movie. That apparently is explained in the anime. Uh, it's very interesting that they went with these two characters, Mizori and Nozomi. They're different, and, and they're very different, but highly dependent on each other. You know, Mizori really depends on Nozomi. She's the outgoing one. Um, Nozori tends to follow Nozomi. 
but Nozomi is the type that needs attention all the time and Mizori is a shy and quiet one so it, it really is Mizori always looking to Nozomi a lot of times but Nozomi isn't exactly perfect herself or, or anything like that she like I said she she seeks attention um, she's a bit undecisive apparently Mizori was asked by a teacher to apply to a music school Nozomi caught wind of that and then you know Nozomi is now following like Mizori's lead hey you know hey I guess we can stay together if I apply to this music school too even though it doesn't sound like she wants to actually be a part of that school at the same time it seems like she can't necessarily let go of Missouri as well um, so they definitely have um, there's tension there in, in the movie one of the biggest thing you know I, I said that there's tension there in the movie but the problem is, one of the biggest problems with the movie and this is the entertainment part really is there's actually very little heavy conflict in the movie I mean everything's a bit subtle you know it's like okay this is a problem we know there's you know the audience knows they're separating eventually school years about the end and what about to end and whatnot Missouri seems to be making friends outside of Nozomi okay but like it doesn't really get that heated you know um, I mean, the one of the biggest conflicts that happened was like Kosaka saying that uh, Mizori isn't good enough or isn't able to, isn't in sync with Nozomi, and and, and that I mean that was it, and she just kind of is. It's kind of mean, but it's it's more like a constructive criticism than any type of like really heavy conflict uh and, and that's the thing it, it's it's very low stakes in a sense like yeah i i suppose you can say that them separating and not you know and their friendship kind of waning is something of a high stakes thing but like in one sense it's really not you don't get this impression that it's like I, I, you know i mean the other extreme is it's not world ending or anything like that obviously but it just doesn't, it, it's more slice of life than like a big thing. It doesn't even feel like a breakup per se, you know, like, it, you know, because they don't have like that relationship, but like, once again, the stakes, I, I guess they're big for them, but I, I can't imagine it feeling that big for the viewer. The pacing is really slow for the movie. Um... And like I said, not a lot happens. It really is just kind of a slice of life thing that is going on. Um, you know, and, and it, it's very relatable in a sense. So that makes it good. But, uh, and you know, you even have like bandmates wanting to get to know Missouri, who's like real shy and quiet and aloof and whatnot. You kind of get this idea everyone seems pretty nice honestly even though they're kind of tense about this you know this uh i think it's a competition coming up and whatnot it, it's it never reaches like this fever pitch where they're like yelling like they're really yelling at each other or slapping each other in the face or anything like that the best the most you get is like like um like i said kosaka just being Give him a harsh criticism about how you know Missouri and Nozomi isn't aren't in sync. Uh, there is, and the biggest mo moment probably is when Missouri asks for a hug. And um, early in the movie, Nozomi was asking for this hug from Missouri. Missouri refused. Missouri asked for one. Later, Nozomi refused because they're kind of growing apart. And you just got to see it, too. There's not, there isn't one instance, one big event that's actually causing them to grow apart. It's not like she found new friends or, like, 
she's into this now, you know, um, she's not into flute anymore or, or anything like that. It just kind of just happened almost orga almost organically, you know, it just kind of happened. But then Missouri, the, the biggest thing probably ha that happens in this movie is near the end of the movie, Missouri asks for a hug, they're alone, and she pretty much just, like, just goes, um, just pours her heart out pretty much. Like, she says, I love you, I can't, you know. She can't really imagine, like, life without her. It, it is, I think it was a love confession. I, I, I don't really know. It, it seemed like that's where they're going. And it kind of seemed like that's where the movie is, um was kind of headed like this is more of a romantic thing but it, it's really tough to say or is it just a deeply platonic thing it, it's kind of up I think that's a bit up for interpretation I, I suppose um, it could have been I, I, I'd probably lean closer to a romantic thing though um, but the thing that makes this movie is the artistry Okay, that, that is it right there. The first 10 minutes of this movie. Seriously, it has Mizomi waiting on the stairs, people passing by, no words are spoken. It's just first 10 minutes. Mizomi comes, Zori gets up, follows Mizomi into the band room. Their, their footsteps align. Okay, that, that's the thing. They, they totally align, and you just hear footsteps. You just hear footsteps. And then there's music in the background that matches the action of the characters. It is really well done from an artistic standpoint. It's subtle. It's very subtle. I mean, if you're into this ty that type of thing, into this like artistry, because they really mix in the music with what's, go with what's going on on screen... And it, the music in itself becomes a character. That's pro, that's the beauty of this movie. It's also just drawn really well. Speaking of drawn well, I never even talked about the Liz and the Bluebird story. And that, that's the thing because I think this has to do with more of the artistic side of this movie. Um, I mean, the, the story of Liz and the Bluebird is apparently this girl named Liz. Was it? found a, a bird and was like taking care of it or some something of that nature um it was like a week since i saw the movie <laughs> so um and then the bird actually becomes human they just they befriend each other but then liz realizes that in order to for her to fly and be free she's got to let her go and it parallels what's going on with Missouri and Nozomi. And the artistry is like watercolor and stuff. Beautiful. I mean, I'm just beautiful, you know? Um, there's not too much of it. Um, I do think that whole theme of like letting them go and fly free gets a little... It's a little too on the nose. That They're not really subtle about it, though. <laughs> you know, it's like the parallel is... I mean, they just flat out say it. Hey, we're kind of like them, aren't we? <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, you know, it, it, they're not really subtle about, like, the parallel between them and the story. Otherwise, it, it's really well, nicely drawn. It doesn't, the, that story doesn't necessarily take over, like, the main story between Missouri and Nozomi. And, um, at the end... Liz sets her free and she doesn't see her anymore. At the end of this movie, they're walking together, you know? So, we don't really know what's going to happen in the future, but it seems like they are going to stay together. Um, and so, it it ends on a good note. I think they're actually making another sound euphonium movie, if, if it's not already out. Um, but, yeah. That's really... The movie in a nutshell, you know, it just, it's more slice of life, the pacing isn't great, um, 
Well, I'm not gonna say it isn't great. It's just it's really slow paced. The stakes aren't very high. So on an entertainment standpoint, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna grade it that highly. It, it's just not like you're not on the edge of your seat, pretty much. I, I mean, th there's a lot of just stuff happening. The music, though, when they're that scene when they're finally in sync, that's pretty beautiful. You know, the music is there. The action that happens on screen always coincides with the music. There's a lot of body movement with the characters that represents their feelings better than words. So there's a lot more than just words that are speaking. Like the music speaks to you. The movement speaks to you. The sound of footsteps speaks to you um, more so than the words that are coming from the characters actually it's 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 quite mundane <laughs> what the characters are saying most of the time um, I mean they're just in a band a bunch of girls in a band really and they're trying to win this competition and it's not you know it's not the most thrilling thing you know it's not like like if you ever seen like your lie in April where it's like oh my god that this emotion is just utterly pouring out in the most tear jerking way <laughs> you know where the guy's thinking about this girl that he totally loves who's in the hospital no no that, that's not happening here you know they don't have that stakes it, that that's like a life and death thing <laughs> you know you, you know like your line April, you kind of actually know there's something of a life and death thing going on here. No, not really, not happening here, you know. Yeah, friendship is breaking apart. It's it's on the precipice, but it's not really like the stakes aren't that high per se, you know. Like you get this impression, like okay, life will move on. It is a phase in their life that they have to go through, you know. Um. So, it, this one, like I said, this movie, it's it's really tough to recommend, though, because, like I said, if you sound, sound euphonium, you would probably want to watch it, and if you liked it, probably want to watch this. Um, it's more of a side story than anything else, you know? Uh, but, if you're looking for, like, an, like something entertaining... Uh, or anything thing like that that really makes you think that, that you know, I wouldn't even say this is like a, a super, it's not particularly philosophical or makes you like really think about some certain thing, per se. But, um, like I said, it, it's all about the music, the artistry, and, and, and whatnot. So, that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. Thank you for listening to this movie review. Next time, I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 33 and 34, an anime review for the Hunter Exam arc of Hunter by Hunter, and a movie review for the anime movie Mirai of the Future. Thank you, and until next time.